are quite ready to play with the AI, although I want to. Oh, here's Shelly. Yeah, I guess I, all right. Sorry about the. There's a, there's a tool apparently where we can do like a smart recording that will produce a transcript and then summarize it into minutes apparently. Whoa. <laughs> I know. I, I, so I but let's, I wonder how well it would do at all of that. I plugged a transcript into a different thing and it it didn't do suitable minutes, but it did do a surprisingly impressive summary of the conversation. Um uh so I don't know. But that's like I don't I don't have too much bandwidth to like play with tech stuff, you know, like uh, yeah, really. You have a I, few other things to do, Greg. Well, <laughs> I'm hoping one of my colleagues can like figure it out and then just kind of teach me, <laughs> you know, a full time person. Hey Shelly. Hi. Okay, if I send my AI to the next meeting. Well, what's that, Rob? Huh? Okay, if I send my an AI to the next meeting. Sure, me. yeah, to your your uh, <laughs> your 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 robot replacement. <laughs> okay. Everyone okay? Doing okay? Yeah. It's a bit wet out there today. Yeah, you got you got it out there too. Yeah. Okay, so I had lost my notes didn't get saved last time. So I'm sorry if I said that I would do more work on this other goals. I can't remember if I had said that I would try to build out the strategies for the other goals. I don't remember. But um does Greg, do you want to share your screen with Sure. The, yeah. yeah. So we can... right. I think I still have the uh so I'll share Shelly the document that you distributed. Yeah, and we can go through it and see if it's Heading in the right All direction. All right, so let me zoom in here. Ooh, too much. Man, I can never, I have this weird wide screen that, all right, tell me if it's uh, too much, too little. More, more, more. More. That's, that's getting there, that's pretty good. Oh, you know what I can do too is I can hide this thing, I think. I'll make it a little more. So the, the first goal was pretty much straight out of Greg's notes uh, and the second one. So one is to identify two parcels in collaboration with the town. So that language where it's not just necessarily municipal land, land, lot, but that it's working with the town to identify two parcels for affordable housing development. Um, we could put a parentheses to specify disposition or acquisition. I left that off just to keep it more general, but we could do that if you had an interest in that. I think it's good the way it is. I like it the way it is. I don't making it. I mean, it says what we're supposed to do and it doesn't exactly limit the ways it could be done. Yep. And then the second one, seek a land donation from a local educational institution for affordable housing development. So again, left that more broad uh, as it was in-, in Well, I would, what about if we seek a collaboration with a local education institution? Because I don't care if they donate the land as long as we get the housing. I think the way that it's- That's, written, just, that it's that's all, huh? I think the way that it's written, it's not necessarily that the trust would get it, but that- the university would donate it for affordable housing. So I, I I think that that's how it's written. So it could be that the university directly disposes of it to Valley, say, for development, but that the trust is helping to push for that, encourage that. I don't even care if there's some way in which the, you know, the educational institution retains some kind of title to the land, but builds affordable housing on it anyway. So that's all. I don't, they, I don't, they don't need to give away. I don't know if there's a way to do that, but if there is, I don't want this to say we can't do it. That's my concern. So whatever everybody else thinks. What if we just change it to contr contribution instead of donation, which could be inclusive of donation, but not necessarily, there's a scenario where they contribute land, but there's not a, I guess they wouldn't have a write-off to begin with, but you know. 
Um, I don't know. I thought it seems kind of the same one way or the other. If you guys all like this, go ahead. <clears throat> That's just was my concern. I don't. I don't think I it's gonna. I, I I think. I mean, th this isn't. You know. Uh, you know. Th this isn't gonna be. Uh, you know, ordinance or, or or bylaw. You know. I mean, I I think we can. We all know the spirit of it, and I I think we can. I just don't imagine that a university would get into the business of affordable housing. So they might do dorm housing for students and keep that you know, affordable, although no university housing is affordable. <laughs> <Right. It's a laughs> so I don't, I just don't know if they'd get in the business of that. So maybe they would keep a land lease, but I, I, I just, I, it's hard for me to imagine that they would want to do that just because it's so outside of what they do. I, but to Greg's point, this isn't an ordinance or a bylaw. It's, it, it can be a little bit, I think you can take a little bit of liberties if it came down to it. Yeah. Okay. I think it'd just be cleaner for a university to just donate land. <laughs> anyway, that's just that's just me. But um and then see, I think it was Carol that brought up the idea of home ownership and somehow speaking to home ownership. So I just wanted to propose, do you want to just put in that you will support the creation of whatever number of affordable of homes for ownership of ownership do you do you want to do you want to name that in a measurable way and so that could look differently it could be that a a proposal is brought to you for 12 units of home ownership it could be that uh the, the land trust has a, a couple options so you could get to that 20 in a variety of different ways but um how does that feel to you okay i I like all of it except the up to <laughs> support the creation of was there, uh, if we don't reach the goal, that's fine. But I would just as soon as have it say 20 or at least, well, not at least is two, but just minimum. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the top level of goal just says support the creation of 200 homes. So just replicate that language support the creation of 20 homes. Yep. Sure. Um, shall I edit? Yep, sure. All right. Of 20 homes for ownership. And I just want to add, I don't necessarily need to see language here, but I, you know, one, and this we can talk about more, uh, you know, with E maybe, but what, what, what I mean by that, but I, I would like to see that, see, you know, see this defined widely, you know, so like maybe those are like land trust homes, which is a little bit creative, but not like super out there, you know, maybe like, you know, there's a scenario where, you know, there's a limited equity cooperative or whatever, you know, I mean, like, so I think, you know, being open to different models, I guess, is my, you know, but, but again, kind of like the, the semantics on, on item B. I'm okay with like defining later, you know? Yeah, I would keep it broad because it may come in different, you sure. know, yeah. need that. maybe there's a habitat partnership. Maybe yeah. there's a community land trust partnership. Maybe there's something or other like ball lane that happens again, I, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, the D is getting to the comment around these non-conforming lots and that perhaps the strategy is to work with the town to create a path for non-conforming lots. So uh, because I think that that's it's primarily going to be a town thing, but the trust could be initiating to get to a way to to move those lots. So I think Rob, that maybe was something that you brought up. Does does it feel like it's kind of getting to what you are something that feels doable? I guess I'd like to understand a little bit more about uh, if, how many non-conforming lots are there? Really, a lot of non-conforming lots? Is that like six, or is it sixty, or something? I don't know. Rob, say something about it, would you? I would say it's closer to 60. I, I don't know how many, but it's it's definitely more than six. There, there's, okay. there's quite a few. Okay. I mean, it could end up being um, a really, if it, if 
if those were able to be disposed of for affordable housing, it could be that a developer like Habitat then builds a home ownership unit. So you could end up doing D and C in right. Kind of right. And then E was um, getting to, there was some, it was put out there, I think from Greg, uh, the idea of a revolving loan fund. And so what you could decide to do under development is to explore the possibility of a revolving loan fund, particularly for, so I put on here because I think of some of what was Greg was kind of pitching last time as um, like smaller scale development, helping to support smaller scale development, I think. And, and so perhaps less savvy developers as well possibly. So I just put in this idea of exploring the possibility of establishing a revolving loan fund for these purposes, small new construction of affordable housing or converting existing buildings to affordable housing. And I just picked 12 units and below that that's just, I just picked that. So if that's something that you think might be interesting to, to explore that. So it's not definitively saying you will do it. It's more, um, because I know that, well, from the meetings that I've had with you, there seems to be some willingness to be um, a little bit innovative or doing things a little differently. And so it, it could be something that the trust does to, to explore the possibility of this locally. Okay. Yeah, curiously, when I read our thing that we never pay any attention to, this, uh, program guidelines somewhere in there it says it is expected that the things that are given out will be loans which i don't think they ever have been but so it's not even inconsistent with what somebody or other once thought we should do yeah and i i, I can share a little more too i mean i, I think it's useful because I, I you know i was kind of riffing and i i, I wrote some thoughts to, to shelly after we all met and i forget what i shared with all of you and what i wrote but you know which was which but um I guess, yeah, and I think just speaking to Carol's point, I think that was probably imagining sort of larger capital investments. Sometimes they come in the form of they're they're they're, they're delivered as loans, but they're kind of always intended to be forgivable. Um, you know, um, I think, and I think maybe early on there was some thought that that might be how the trust sort of capital investments might be structured, and I think there's wonky finance reasons for that rob you might know more about that but um but i you know here i, I guess on my mind has sort of been in a, a kind of a, a con constellation of things but one you know is this question of you know we talked about intercepting units earlier on in this process you know and i just thinking about maybe there's a way to empower players to you know, to, to convert, you know, who, who, who might be candidates to obtain, you know, single family houses or duplexes or whatever that, that are currently going into the student market. If there was some discount financing or something, maybe there's a way to get some percentage of those, you know, um, into some modest affordability. Um, you know, if we, you know, and, and then I think in a, in a bigger sense, um, I was just thinking about like the ecosystem generally and like what, you know, I, I would like, some sort of modest portion of our overall efforts here, I think 10%, you know, as a round number to sort of be aimed at broadening the playing field, addressing the ecosystem overall, trying to attract new players in, you know, like figure out how do we not just, you know, like we don't want to stop doing the sort of bread and butter, you know, supporting the tax credit developers and, you know, and doing habitat stuff, but figure out like, what are, is, are there ways we can try to incentivize you know, the ecosystem side. And I think there's a lot to do there as, Kel as Shelley proposed on the educational side too. And, and, you know, so that's kind of where that, and the other thing, the reason the revolving loan fund came to mind too, is I was also thinking about, um, and this is sort of a separate piece of it, but if there was some way to present it as a, as, as a, as a loan fund rather than capital investments, maybe there's a way to draw in entities like Amherst College, or, you know, maybe there's some endowed religious communities, you know, or, um, you know, folks who have investment funds that, you know, that would be potentially open to a social impact 
scenario. Maybe, um, yeah. Maybe it's somebody who has already a duplex and they would like to renovate the side they're not in in order to make it more energy efficient. And they agree to make it affordable in exchange for a 0% loan to do the construction. Exactly. That's the kind of thing I was thinking about on the on, on the use side, you know, I, mean, I think so there's different, yeah. you know, and, and I think a, a friend of mine who's, who's deeply knowledgeable about this stuff, you know, said to me, you know, kindly, he's like, Greg, like, you know, and this, this is why explore is an important word here. He's like, you know, he's like, what's the finance problem you're solving? You know, and I don't, I don't know that yet, <laughs> you know, I mean, so, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, I think that that would be an example of like, maybe that's a, you know, uh, a finance problem that, that we could solve, you know, is, um, is that yeah, sort of somebody thing, so. who needs a small, a small bunch of some money up front to do something to their property to, and then they'll, it will be affordable. They need the money now, and they don't want to pay a lot of interest. I, it seems like worth exploring to me. I think okay. just, I like it. Great. Um, go ahead, Erica. Sorry. I was going to say, can we just keep that example so others understand what we're sure. talking about? Yep. <laughs> Thanks. And there are trusts that structure some of their funds that they give out as loans that they expect to be paid back versus ones that are long-term and forgivable. So some trusts will offer like pre-development funds or even some towards, towards construction and then they expect them to be paid back at permanent financing. So it is something yeah. on the table if you want to delineate, delineate kind of the kind of money that you are willing to offer. Um, and then like Somerville has a two to 3% interest rate, really low, particularly compared to current interest rates. But um, they do structure it that way. So it, it's possible to, to think about that a little bit. Yeah, I like the, I like that idea. Place that I worked a long time ago had a, was one of the first places that had revolving loan funds. It was for community land trust development. <clears throat> and, um, you know, one of the things that they, that that thing did was to push banks to stop being such assholes about what their requirements for loans were. That are the people who could pay rent perfectly well forever but couldn't get a loan for some reason and so it's kind of a different thing but anyways i like the idea of revolving loan funds <laughs> okay and then i have just under this consider adding to the trust guidelines so we, it's what we talked about last time under development but i'm i'm suggesting that we that we review the guidelines and maybe um alter them a bit and try to use them but so this pointing out this trying to elevate this interest in in you supporting innovative solutions so and and that it, it could include models such as co-housing community land trusts and accessory dwelling units because this revolving loan fund is interesting for adus as well so yeah, um, yeah. adding to the criteria uh, proposals that include a mix of affordability. So you've talked multiple times about wanting to have uh, a mix of affordability in the housing that you support. So possibly adding to your criteria that you should be using when you review proposals, that proposals that include a mix of affordability will be highly rated or, or some language to um, elevate your interest that affordable housing proposals that come before you have uh, a variety of affordability in them. That part is actually, if you, if I, because I just read this thing the other day, finally, in the criteria for submitting things are all kind of like something that's good, something that's better, that sort of stuff about at least a variety of levels of income is in, is in what's there now. There isn't anything about the innovative part, which I like including, but so then, so then I guess what I'll say is my proposal is instead of putting these two pieces in the goals that we revisit the guidelines and, and, and I think operationalize probably more so uh, an, a regular referral to those guidelines. And to make sure that new members of the trust that maybe we update it, that people are on the same page again, just to review it. It's just a good place for people to understand how you see your role, how you're operating. So I, I think that revisiting that would be a good idea. I agree. And so this, these two bullet points, that language, we're not saying that we're definitive on that language or proposing that language, but just when we get to the guidelines that will 
consider adding those that language somehow. Is that okay? Yeah, well, consider adding those concepts, even if the language isn't like that. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So the, so that would leave us with these five priorities under development. Does it does that feel like it's reflecting your thoughts and our conversation last time? There, oh, so I highlighted a couple things in um, Greg's notes. So one was the work with developers to ID land. And so I did bring, I think I brought up in my email just the concern of how could you do that in a way that um, wouldn't look like favoritism in some way. And so I'm suggesting that you just use A as identifying parcels and do it kind of in a more formal way. It doesn't mean that you couldn't have conversations with a developer, particularly if a developer came to you, but I, I think you just need to be a little bit cautious about how you, um, about you reaching out to a particular developer without it being more broad that you're open to doing that with any and all developers. Does that make sense? Just from a, um, because you're a public entity. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. So it I, makes sense. And also, I'm not sure I like it. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't, no. don't want to not be able to go talk to Valley about something that we think and maybe they think, and we just want to have a conversation about what they think could work or couldn't work or something. And so if we can't do that, that just maybe that necessary. It might be necessary. It just, I don't like it. That's all I have to say. It like feels like it limits your ability to figure out how to do your job well. I wouldn't put it formally in your goals. If it's a more casual kind of conversation, you just need to be careful about it appearing as if you're, uh, because you're public entity and because you're bound by procurement, you just need to be careful. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, it's an informal conversation isn't a goal. Well, if it's in the goal, that, that, that's okay. I get that. that yeah. Thanks for it. Thank you. That's helpful. I mean, and yeah, you, I think, you know, and Carol, is, is there an outcome that you're, that that would imply that we, you don't see here? And what I'm saying, uh, or the out, I think the outcome to me would be maybe we, and maybe them, but I'm thinking more of we, because, or me, because they know a lot more about what the heck they're doing than I do. The outcome is that I would have a better understanding of something or other. And, and maybe of some possibility that I didn't, some possibility that I was thinking of that they see reasons why, oh, if you just did this, it would work better. Or else, you know what, that's never going to work because of this. Or I don't you know. know. I just don't yeah. want to not be able to talk to them. They're I got smart. it. I got it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think maybe something okay. to the effect, and I, I have a lot to say about uh, education and engagement. Um, right. And I think maybe we, we can live down there. And I, I can say yeah. how. Yeah. And there's nothing that precludes us having a conversation with developers as long as we're the ones who are not reviewing the RFR afterwards, because then we can recuse ourselves for having, you know, I mean, we, we can explore things, but if there's an RFR, it's going to be the RFR that determines the application, but we can recuse ourselves from reviewing the RFR if we think that we've already had uh, conversations that might show favoritism to a particular developer. Yeah, my concern is the idea of like saying, let's find Valley a parcel of land to build on. Like that, that's not, that's not an appropriate right. entity, but got it. Okay. Say, we found this parcel and maybe Valley will bid on it. That that's fine. And yeah. be careful about, we found this parcel and then asking Valley to come and do a site visit and talk to you about it. That's problematic because they may want to bid on it. They are right. you just right. be careful about how you're doing this so that you don't have any um, anyone push back on on your projects down the road. So that's just the point that I was getting to. So, so working with the town to identify land, great. Working with an individual developer, that that could be problematic. Thank you. This all makes much more sense to me after this conversation. So thank you to everyone. Yeah, and then the other thing was um, there was a note last time about duplexes, work with the planning department, expand the type of housing that could be created, possibly a pos policy zoning approach. I don't think I put this in my email, but I think we might want to um, consider, we might have talked about this last time, um, policy kind of stuff. Think about how to put that in a, in the education and public engagement, that perhaps that there's some policy discussion that you do in a more kind of public 
setting under public engagement versus development necessarily, because I think it's going to be more like advocacy work with the town and not so much um, driving the development itself, driving it so much. Yeah. Yeah. So those yeah, were that makes sense to me too. Notes that I didn't incorporate into the development piece, but that I think we can, um, at least with the policy stuff, I think we should do that, do some of that, especially because you guys, your team seems to be particularly willing to do policy work. Okay, so that's development. Do we feel ready to dig into funding? A bit more? Okay, so let's see, 1127, okay. So we do have this goal of secure $4 million in the next five years. And we have two possible um, ideas here. Advocate for short-term rental fees to be directed to the trust. Um, seeking a yearly CPA contribution. Can I, can I ask why the um, supporting the transfer fee isn't there? Because all these things seem like they're kind of policy oriented. Somebody yeah. has to agree to do something or other that they're not doing now. So I just wondered why that other one isn't there. We, I, we only, I only put together two possible strategies for the full board to understand what we meant by this goal. So that's the only reason why. So this is now where we're going to be adding strategies, modifying these strategies, deleting. So work towards the implementation of uh, a real estate transfer fee. Yeah. Ensuring that a good percentage comes to the housing trust or a certain percentage comes to the housing trust. Yeah. <clears throat> Great. I mean, of uh, okay. Do we think that short term rental fee getting a percentage of that is doable and immersed at all? Yes, I think, I mean, I, I, over a five year, what, 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 sorry, five years, yeah, um, I think that's certainly something worth putting on as a goal, <laughs> you know, or a, as a strategy. Does the, I, does the town even collect yes, short-term rental fees? We, we do, yes, we can, okay. I confirm that we do. Um, I've not yet tracked down, um, I just haven't had time to, figure out who I'm supposed to ask about how much, but, um, uh, and, and honestly, the, yeah, I, mean, I, you know, we don't, the town getting the revenue from it is a simple thing in the technical sense. It gets just paid from the state. Right. DOR. The DOR. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just sent you Nate and uh, Carol, um, doc, uh, information from a workshop in 2017 by the FERCOG. And it's got all the information in there. So um, I, I would be surprised if we weren't getting fees. Okay, good. So are we willing to put a percentage on how much you'd like to request to the trust? Not without knowing more about it. I don't even know what the rental, I don't even know what the fee is or what percentage it is or so. I just don't feel like I know enough about it to add a percent. Yeah, I'd like to... <laughs> um, uh, I, I'm sorry that I haven't done so yet, but I'd like to see if I can determine what we're collecting annually, you know, kind of, you know, some of those. Okay, so let's leave it as a possible strategy, but um, with X percent at this point. And then would you like to, um, so I'm assuming that you, the goal is to get CPA funds every year. That's the hope. Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable putting a percentage or how much you'd like to? We've tried 500,000 every year. <laughs> is that what you, is that what you try every year? That's what we've tried every year. Sort of many years in a couple of years, we've backed off from it relatively quickly. Part of the problem is that 
it's not only us who go to this EPA, it's also some of the developments that we support. Right. Mm -hmm. So it ends up to make it hard to say every year you should give us this, no matter whether there's three other developments or no other developments. I, I don't know. I, I would like to get something every year, but I don't know that a fixed percentage seems like it deals with it adequately to me. Somebody else say what they think. Well, um, don't they have actually a percentage in there that says 10% of their CPA has to go to affordable housing? Um, so they actually do have a percentage in there. And why couldn't, you know, I mean, I understand that others go and I'm sure this year they're probably going to look to see how much money we have. Um, but I, you know, there are some places where the trust is actually the arm of the CPA to do affordable housing. Um, so that's one. And the other is those organizations that are going there are also coming to us. Um, so, I mean, I don't feel bad asking for at least 5% of that, if not 10% of the 10% that they put aside. Well, that would be You're pretty nominal. You're asking for 10% of 10%? That you know, would five, not be... 5% um, of 10% or, or you 5 know... 5% of 10... I don't know. I think that wouldn't be very much money, but yeah. But they have to set aside for housing every year. So, they have mean, to set aside 10%. They usually do more than that. So I, I don't feel good about encouraging them. We might get less money by doing this. I mean, I just like... I don't know. I, I, I need it. I guess maybe I just need to think about it more or I'm not comfortable with the specific percent because they, they're they pretty good at supporting affor at supporting housing. We have to do all the baloney of writing a thing every year, but, um, so, but they do support housing and they support it probably almost always more than 10%. And they kind of try to figure out how to mix and match what we want for no definable project and what specific projects need for their project. So I, I, I don't know. I've talked enough. I'll try to be quiet now. Well, so how, when you ask for five hundred thousand dollars, what do you have a sense of? Is that is that the ten percent? Is that about what ten percent is every year in Amherst, or is that much higher than ten percent? Like, do you have any idea what ten percent is typically in Amherst? I don't know. It wouldn't have, be too hard to figure out, but I never thought about trying to figure um, it out. So I don't know. I think that it is, um, uh, you know, and I should have, and I apologize. I should have hard numbers on this and I don't right now. Um, um, I think that it, it's, it's, it's above 10%. Um, and I think it's generally, I mean, I, and I, one question in my head is how to think about debt service too, because if you add in debt service, then it's a, even more above temper because right. there's debt service that that cpa pays on larger investments from previous years um into earlier projects uh, like they're still paying i think for east gables um come on big paragraph that's the bottom what's that rough that's the bottom oh, oh thank you yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um um And Shelly, I guess, you know, putting this back on you, uh, um, um, is there is there a discernible sort of like ranking of communities as far as like how much of their CPA resources they're putting toward housing? Like, is there a is there a benchmark goal? No, and it's all across the board. Okay. I think it's just that to we have some kind of um, to be able for the trust to get to a point where you can rely on certain having certain funds, then it yeah. helps their plan. So I, I think that moving in that direction, even if it's asking for less, so maybe so I'm trying to I'm trying to come up with where on the Community Preservation Coalition's website about how much money Amherst brings in. I'm I'm not near as fast as some people are on this. Well, I can tell you how much they spent last year. Um, they had 2,793,419, and I'm trying to see what percentage of 500,000 that is. <laughs> okay, so that means that 10% would be 200,000 if that if they spent. Or two, I think she said 2.7, so 270 would, would be 10%. 270,000? 
You, you said 2.7 million, Erica? Yeah, 2.793 million. Okay, so that means 500,000 as much is, you know, not Less. quite not quite 20% perhaps, but it's... Right. So, so go ahead. One way of, of thinking about this maybe is that to sort of incorporate what Carol's been talking about is seek a yearly CPA contribution to affordable housing projects of 25%. So there's four, four categories. Affordable housing should get at least 25%. And maybe in some years, you know, Valley has a project and they're asking for money and, and they get part of that 25%. But in years that, that there aren't any projects, then we might get all the 25%. That's an interesting thought. So we get whatever's left over. Um, after 25% or 30%, you know, maybe it should be more than more than 25% that goes to affordable housing out of CPA. Um, and, and, and so Rob, you're saying just more take a policy position on how much CPA should spend on housing. Right. And then include us in what CPA doesn't spend on projects. Yep. I kind of like that idea better, or at least it, yeah. The other thing about this is any way that we seek it, I believe it's going to involve talking with the CPA people in order to figure out how to, because they're not, I mean, we can't just do it by ourselves and think they're going to like it. So partly whatever we figure out, we could have some suggestions, but I think until we work with them, uh, we'll learn a lot by working with them about what might be possible or what we might be able to do or something. And you need to be able to make the case that you're adding value to Amherst around affordable housing. So even though, yes, they fund too. I mean, Somerville's model has been that they transfer about 45% of their CPA funds to their trust, but a developer could still come to the CPC as well. So they still are primarily using the trust for affordable housing, but a developer could unlike Cambridge, where Cambridge transfers 80% of their CPA funds to their housing trust. And wow. a, an affordable housing developer never comes to the CPC because all of the money is sent to the trust. So uh, you're not there, there yet. Amherst isn't there. But I think that moving in that kind of direction where you're partnering with the CPC to get more, more CPA funds and more consistently so that you can better plan, that will just increase your effectiveness. And, and so I think that to try to move in that direction would be a good thing. And I think that you're at the point where moving in that direction makes sense. To me, it makes sense. Maybe the focus should be on partnering with the CPC to be more active or more proactive around uh, affordable housing uh, funding. Because we don't, we have not met with the CP, well, CPA at all, except when we ask them for money. Uh, and, you know, to see that, you know, the number of projects that they're also supporting around affordable housing, it's like, it's sometimes it's hard because as Carol said, and it's usually Carol who's gone, um, we don't have specific projects. We just want to be available. We want to have the funding available just in case something comes up where the quickest and, and most flexible uh, entity to, to, you know, to um, meet that need versus the CPA only meets once a year and the town has, you know, designated budgets. So um, we, we had, fill a good role, but maybe we need to do more planning with the CPA around their vision and our vision. Yeah. I mean, I, so I think there's maybe a, a sub a, agree. And, and, you know, and I have this. Yeah, I mean, maybe there's like a sub a sub strategy to this or whatever, which is kind of is separate from the amount of money is work out, you know, what what's the best way to do business here, you know, like, um, and, you know, is that discernible? Um, you know, should we move, should we be moving towards a model where they're mostly not funding housing and it all comes through us? Or more, or, or is what Rob said the best approach? You know, where like there's a threshold that we share jointly. Um, you know, and there you go. What but yeah, I, th I think. But I think there's examination to do that, and there's 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 conversations, and there's sort of staff level lobbying. Frankly, you know, I mean, I, I think, um, yeah. 
but it seems like an interesting process to go through. Well, I like the way that Shelley describes the range of it. And so if we could make seek a regular yearly contribution of CPA funding to the trust, just right now say it's regular, with it and figure out later about the details when we work with them. Because the point is, we know we're going to get some money every year without having to do so much work, do so much stuff. I I think that's what I would like to see that it is that it whatever it is that we come up with, which we have to, uh, I'm sure, work with others and ourselves to figure out. But it gives us something regular. So what if we just leave it at very simple, seek a yearly CPA contribution from the town and the measurable part is just that it's annual, that you get on a point where it's annual. I mean, ideally, you yeah. fill out an application. Ideally, the CPC would just annually make a recommendation for contribution to the trust. That would be ideal. So maybe it's moving, get trying to get to that point. So far, I don't, at least since I've, been on the trust, I don't think there has been a year when they haven't given the trust something. I might be remembering wrong, but I don't I don't remember a year like that. And and in some years the trust has gone with two proposals, a development proposal and um some kind of staffing proposal. We there was a there was a CPA um grant to the trust one time when we were hiring a consultant to help us and there was to pay that consultant. Um, I don't know. So, so yeah, we, I like I like the way that you said it. What if we say CPA CPA contribution from the town? That's nothing different. That's what already happens. It's just that you might not get the level that you asked for. You might ask for five hundred thousand, and they say no. Right. So, so it should be by, by huh? Well, I don't really like that goal. If it's basically what's already happening. Yeah. That doesn't. Are you suggesting yeah, that, that um, the contribution we made without our asking? It's like it's like it's already approved. Right, right now, we have to go and say we want this much five hundred thousand dollars because these are the projects that might happen, or these are projects that have been happening, and and justify it. What we actually want is to have, not have to ask. Just say, of course, you're going to give us money. Yes. <laughs> So like there are some communities like Grafton has often been this where they'll just they'll transfer the 10% to the trust. Right. So like I mean that would be really ideal is that they is that the CPC just trans just recommends 10% be sent to the trust every year. And then the developers could still come to the CPC and and they could get funds from both, but then the the trust can rely on that amount. So for you, that would be this two hundred thousand, about two hundred thousand dollars a year. So at least you could just plan on having that. It doesn't mean that you couldn't ask for additional if there was something else. But the, that if you could get to the point where they just agreed to that, that that made sense to them, and then you don't have to apply for it, they just put that in the recommendations. Like to me, that would be that would be a, a good path to head toward. Yeah, I like that idea. For instance, I wouldn't be surprised if this year we go and ask them for money and they don't give us any because of the in lieu payment that we're supposed to get. I, I would I would not be surprised if we had a hard time arguing that we need something when we just got more money than we've ever had ever. And especially if we don't have anything lined up for that money. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, so I, 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 it gets to another sticky sort of policy thing of like, how do we think about that? And you know, what's the, you know. So I, I think what I'm hearing is that we have a goal that we seek a process by which the CPA provides an annual minimum amount to the housing trust. And what we now have to do is do that without uh, getting into the conversation that we might get in lieu of. Um, it is something regardless if we get you know, a million, five million, et cetera, from somebody else. It's that what we're seeking is a process that no matter what, they will give us 200,000 minimally. 10%. Or a percent 10%. or whatever. I mean, some definable amount that we get routinely without having to argue for it. 
So I think that the, there's a couple things going on here. So one is that it's hard for a trust to be effective if your funds go up and down, up and down, and you can't really plan. So one is starting to make the case that having a consistent source of funding that you can rely on, regardless of other funds that might come in, that that's critical to your tr the trust being able to be effective over the long term. And then two, it's once these goals and the priorities are completed, then I think that the trust needs to be meeting with the CPC and explaining it, sharing it, going through your vision, and perhaps even before you totally formalize it, present it, and allow for some space for feedback. Uh, but I think that, that part of what we'll need to put under education public engagement is strengthening your relationship with the CPC so that you're on a similar plane. They understand what your what you see your role is, what you're trying to work towards. So what I'm wondering is if this goal, if we actually say something like work with the CPC, I don't know the exact words yet, but like towards annually allocating 10% of CPA funds, so that, that, that's, that's awkward, but like maybe it is, maybe we try to do language for the goal, knowing that it, this is a goal that's not gonna happen this year necessarily, but that you're working towards over the next five years. And recognizing that this has to be in collaboration with the CPC, obviously you don't direct the CPC, but working with them to annually allocate a certain percentage to the trust. And we can wordsmith that a little bit better, but this is a five-year five-year goal. I'm yeah. Gonna, I like, uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, we say that about the town up in something else. Work, working with the town, blah, 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 blah. So working with the CPA, blah, blah, blah. That seems consistent with what we're saying elsewhere. Right? But, yeah. And then you put it out there that you'd like a consistent contribution. You're naming the 10%. It has to go towards the housing anyway, but you're not being, you know, where it would be perceived hopefully as greedy, saying that you want the 25%, 25% or 30% or whatever. And then it still allows them to be funding housing too, because it seems like that they're not at the at, at a place where they want to just hand that over to the trust. It could be a starting point. I like it. So is, is what I have here close enough to what we're talking about or do I need to wordsmith this while we're on the call here? Um, I think just leave it at that for now. And then okay. we, um... I don't, yeah, I don't know that you, without having to apply. And okay, I guess. So yeah, I, 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 uh, I don't know if I'd put that in the strategy. Better, well, sure, there's, better. yeah, there's better language for this, I'm sure, but we can. Leave it at that for now. Yeah. You could just stop at 10%. Long to me, and the rest of it seems like how you seek that, how you do it, you're doing it collaboratively. Um, see what happens, okay. And I'm leaving this word here because I have a note attached to it, <laughs> but um, okay, <laughs> we'll delete that later. If you were to and with that, then over five years, that would be a million dollars, which, you know, is not terrible, but it's, it's, it's well, not sure we're going. Yeah. Yeah. Not a ton. Yeah. So it's, a, it could be a starting point if you get something consistent and then ideally it would be increased over time, perhaps. Yeah. I feel like both internally, we need some more numbers and also we need to see what happens with the housing bill too you know i mean because that could radically I, the, the the this landscape could radically change or be totally the same you know in two months um two months that's optimistic <laughs> well yeah. housing bill is due in two months <laughs> time checks 10 of Oh my gosh. Okay. So um, I don't think that this is going to get us to 4 million, but um, it's a starting point. Can you think of any other funding sources, possible funding sources? <laughs> Educational <What> institutions. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, so you have this in lieu of payments. So that's a possibility in the next five years, right? That you could get some 
possibly some. Yeah, that it's just hard to. The I'm other asking. thing that we have talked about as a it, it's connected to the in lieu payment, but right now it's set at a very particular thing and it can't be increased. But there's a proposal we're going to talk about it at our next meeting, trying to ch change that um, language in that bylaw somewhat so that it, if someone wants to do an in lieu thing, there's a possibility of getting a, you know more from it than that particular way the formula is. Maybe that should be in here. Maybe we're doing it now, so it doesn't matter. So that would be under Nate, under the planning. Yeah. Um, sure. So we can just do revise, um, uh, uh, explore in lieu. Um, um, Is that like you? Yeah. Um, better language to come, but hopefully that's holds the place. Yep. I think, yeah, I, I think we should, we might have a little more work to do on on funding, but I think we can maybe get some stuff done on engagement if if we're or if, Yes. Should we just spend a few minutes there? Let's do that. Okay. Um, three outreach efforts a year to educate the community about local housing needs and support. Okay. So I guess the part of our, our conversation had been how explicit, how specific do we get with, do we do that? Or how specific do we get with these things? Do we have a couple that are specific and then something that's more open? Um, so two just possibilities are to make sure that you have an annual conversation with the CPP. And another is kind of building off the, the event that you've oftentimes done is kind of a housing forum that the trust is, I think most years or initially you did, you held some sort of kind of public forum that you floated an idea or, you know, sought feedback on stuff or presented data. Do you still do that? Some sort of annual forum? I don't know if it's been quite annually, but, um, and sometimes it ends up to be focused on something more, a particular project or something or other, but. So, well, yeah, I mean, I think that that, that could be interesting. I, I know I wrote down some stuff too. I mean, I think for, a here, I actually think we should sort of tweak this. Um, what did I write? Uh, just engage with peer bodies, you know? I mean, we're talking, you know, there's a going to be the opportunity to interface with planning, the planning board, you know, um, I think there's potential opportunities to interface with the ZBA. Um, uh, obviously, CRC already, you know, or, or whatever, CPC, whichever it is. Um, and I'm the sorry. Reparations people. Yeah, I mean, and I think but there's some very concrete, like for example, like you know, we're we're going to have an opportunity to weigh in specifically on a housing overlay with planning. We'll have an opportunity to weigh in on funding with CPA. We'll have an opportunity to, uh, you know, we could decide to encourage, you know, the ZBA to um, adjust their approach to things. You know, especially when there's projects that we sponsored um you know so i so i think like sort of you know and also just i'll say too i think there is definitely support um that i've heard from the staff level in just community engagement generally um you know as as, as a big priority for us I, I i think that's healthy so i um <clears throat> So I think what I'm hearing you state just for the first part, which I think, you know, we've started, but we haven't really done it um, based on a, on a vision, um, is that I don't think we've ever met internally as town boards and groups to discuss affordable housing and how our visions intersect. We did that with the CRC, and that was really great because we wanted to look to see whose lane was in what. Um, we could do that with the CPA, we could do it with the planning board, we can do it with the ZBA. Why not have an internal forum on affordable housing? 
um, to, you know, to sort of kick off. Um, that is something, you know, hold joint meetings with internal uh, boards that have a similar mission or um, an overlapping mission. That could be one. Um, the community engagement, I think, you know, is, is a little bit, yeah, that's separate. To me, it's a little separate. <laughs> Um, and an annual community forum, you know, that could be, you know, continue, we could continue a listening session each year um, where we would present what we've achieved and what's yet to achieve. I mean, I think there's a lot of frustration on affordable rentals, um, you know, it's, but I think we also need to do a better job on, which we were going to do with the community forum. It was going to be actually a two-part forum. One was going to be on listening to the community. The second was going to be actually bringing different resources to the community that exist to connect community with resources, which we didn't do um, because it just took so much putting one yeah. together and then writing a report. Um, so I do believe that we do have an opportunity to do more engagement with the community on different topics. And, and I think one of the things we also talked about is um, meeting possibly with landlords uh, or trying to create more affordable rental space through landlord meetings. Um, you know, we, we talked about, you know, doing possibly, you know, with multiple groups here in the community advocacy groups, focusing on how do you get a mortgage? How do you prepare or bringing in people who can talk about mortgage lending and, and what needs to happen? So, uh, but we're literally like going, you know, working with the NWACP or other, you know, ethnic uh, focused um, uh, advocacy groups to do more community forums to get people, to help people understand how they can become homeowners. Uh, or, you know, their, their rights in terms of being, you know, renters. Mm -hmm. um, does Wayfinders do first-time home buyer classes or Valley? Valley does. Um, so we, you know, we try to distribute that, which is very interesting. A really quick note, I went to pay my taxes and I heard the young man who was working at the town talking about geez, I'd really love to own a home, but it's just so unaffordable. And I said, have you ever gone to first time homeowners? And I said, I'll send you the Valley, um, you know, workshops. But here internally, we have people working at our town hall who don't even know about these things. So, so, so that, that, that's a really uh, great setup for this thing that I wrote down, you know, thinking about, and this is like the organizer, you know, in me, as far as engagement and, uh, you know, Thinking about and, and and I think about this more from an advocacy perspective than a um, a service provision perspective, but it could be parallel or both or you know what. But identifying specific constituencies for engagement, right? I mean, I think like if mm. we're talking about like how can education and advocacy over time move the needle, I think part of it is getting key constituencies off the sidelines. So maybe we say that's seniors, or maybe we say it's students, or maybe we say it's. Uh, it's perspective, um, you know, uh, young, you know, young employee, local employees uh, as prospective homeowners, you know, but I think like point being, as opposed to a like general come one, come all resource fair or, or advocacy fair, you know, say, hey, well, like who's, who, you know, who are the folks who are not at the table right now that would, would bring something to it if we invited them and, and encourage their. So what if the, I, it could be, if we keep it as a strategy, but we just add in the list um, after like relay current housing needs, um, provide or share housing resources and seek feedback. Like if we add it in that, and then if you just commit to this at least once a year, this kind of public forum event, and it can look different per year, but it can have these different kinds of elements. Like, does that, does that feel doable? Yes, except I like the things that Greg said, it's not only teachers can't live here, firefighters can't live here, people in town call can't live here, half the people who work here can't live here. And so I would like to try to find some way to seek to engage some of the, some of the people who have, who we know have an interest because they're here living and doing stuff, but they can't really afford to live here. I'd like to find some way to engage some of those kinds of constituencies. I really like that idea a lot. But you mean engage just by how, what do you mean by engage? 
I guess I mean like <clears throat> I don't know what I mean, but maybe something like how do we just what Erica just said, what can we do to make sure that people who who work in town are aware of the possibility of home buyer education opportunity? How do we how could we do that? Maybe it's having a meeting and maybe it's finding a way to I don't know what it is. I mean, I guess there's issue. You can't just get the names of everybody who works anywhere because you're not supposed to do that. So I don't exactly know how to do it. Absolutely. But I think it's a worthwhile thing to try to figure out a way to do. Mm -hmm. Like, like, uh, Carol, you mean like a worthwhile thing to engage just using this example, town employees in, you know, in, in what might be available to them resource wise. Yes. So even if it's putting things on the bulletin boards in the schools, um, in town hall, in the bangs, in the fire station, mm -hmm. in the police station, in any place in place in any of the places people work, if if um, businesses have bulletin boards where you can post things, maybe it's something that that old fashioned. So basically, it's about how to disseminate information about housing resources. Yeah. Yeah. To particular consistencies. So that, yeah. Yep. So that seems yes, like thank a, you. a different kind of um, strategy that's more just about getting information out there and how do you do that better in Amherst? Yes. I think that's important. I think I, like so many times I can't even find whatever is going on in the next three hours by going to the town website because it, I don't know, partly it's me, I agree, but it's not only me. And, you know, town happenings are different than, than private housing resources, but yeah, I think, you know, the, but I think there's, and I, and I, and I guess I think there's a, there's probably a measurable in there somewhere. Um, Yeah, I don't know how you make it measurable, but these things here aren't exactly measurable other than three outreach efforts. But the description of these things, I guess you can tell, did we hold a meeting or not? And so that's measurable. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, and I don't think we're ready now to say who it is, but I think, I think part of one way to do this would be to say like, just to sort of intend to have some conversations around who are the targeted constituencies, you know, um, and then come back and say, and, and look and say, did we, you know, did we engage those constituencies as represented by, you know, their participation in, you know, X um, resource uh, offering or, you know, Y advocacy scenario, um, you know, like for example, you know, on the advocacy side, we could say, you know, we could say we want to have you know more students participate um, you know in the housing dialogue in Amherst, and we could measure that by just watching you know ZBA hearings or um, uh, or who comes to our meetings, you know um, you know you know who 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 applies to be on the you know on the the housing trust, you know I think like um, so I think there's I I think I think the, to me the secret sauce here is naming a constituency and then finding ways to engage them that so, seems it seems harder to act the measuring you're doing seems hard to me because i mean people come to our meeting do i know if it's somebody who works here or a student or a whatever whatever i accidentally i might know but i could very well not know any of that yeah we have to talk that through you know but i think like yeah. but i think you know yeah so it's 12.05 and uh the time goes so fast this group. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit more work on this right now to uh, Erica's point last time that I, it, it got away from me, time got away from me. So I'm going to do a little bit more this afternoon, send this, send this out. And then if we could just quickly look at the calendar to, so it's um, May 30th today. Do we have a, another meeting in our calendar? I think we uh, have a monthly one. We have it on the 20th, right? Yes. Yes. And then, so your trust meeting is thirteenth. The thirteenth. So we're really not ready to 
present anything, I don't think. Unless you wanted to do just the development strategies and take it in smaller bites. Does that make sense just because your group is um, engaged and opinionated? That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. We never like get it. through all of it anyway, so why not? <laughs> sure, sure, why not? Since we feel most confident about that section. Okay, so, so if we, why don't we put the development strategies on your agenda for the 13th and then plan on having this the the rest of it for june Does that makes sense for july i mean oh my god july <laughs> <laughs> yes oh almost. yeah we gotta reschedule that too i think it's on the fourth no it's not <laughs> no no it's not never mind yeah ours isn't something else is yeah are you meeting on the 11th for sure that's the, the idea well, I'm going to be there. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. <laughs> you take off. You take off August, or do you just meet all the all year long? We meet all year long. Usually, some some in some years we have sort of decided to take a month off. It's kind of yeah. whatever people decide. Okay, I don't even remember that. That's good to know. <laughs> I totally forgot. <laughs> okay, great. So let's say the 13th, and then your meeting on the 13th will be. You start at seven. Typically, that's yeah. Yep. And we're meeting on Tuesday, I think, to uh, to plan that agenda. Um, so, Shelly, can we get back to you about when we get to a, to this? Yeah. About what time? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, what's and, good for you, Shelly? Yeah, what's good for you, actually? That was the next question. Yeah, yeah. The later, the better. Okay. Yep. We can do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have the Housing Institute on those two days, the 12th and the 13th. And so if I can have a little bit of time with my daughter and big get her to bed, then that would be ideal yeah. if possible yeah. okay great okay so that that'll be our next our next step and then we'll meet on the um 20th to try to finish this up for trying to get through the rest of the strategies yeah and, and that's on the 20th right yeah yeah, yeah. okay great. great sounds like plan all Thanks, right. Everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Right. Are you gonna, Greg? Are you gonna give Shelly whatever the thing that you've done some yes, work on? Yes, I will. This thing that I've been typing on that. That's... This thing I've been typing on. I will forward to Shelly, so she'll have that as well. Okay, <laughs> great. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.